Hey guys, welcome to episode number 400. That's right, 400. It's a huge milestone here at Greg's Fish Room. I'm super excited to have brought you 400 episodes of fish related content. And today's episode is going to be awesome. It's going to be really special. We are going to convert a regular shop light into an LED shop light. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right, and here we are at the workbench, AKA the kitchen table. And uh, we've got a couple of LED lights here. You can see them here. Um, they are from a brand called Sunco. I'll leave the link to those in the description down below if you'd like to check them out. And uh, the most important thing here to look at when you are buying bulbs and specifically before you retrofit a fixture for these bulbs is the installation diagram. That will show you how the, um, the fixture needs to be wired to accept these bulbs. And this is really important for LEDs because a lot of LEDs, actually most LEDs, you can't just plug them directly into a regular shop light fixture. Um, some of them you can, some of them will allow you to use it with the ballast that a regular T12 or T8 bulb takes, but it uses extra uh, electricity and uh, it's completely unnecessary. So um, the first thing we're going to do is cut that ballast out. But before we do that, uh, I wanted to show you the two different types of LED lights that you can come across. Um, and here they are. The first one is a two-sided LED light. Um, sometimes it'll be called two-sided connection. Um, sometimes it'll be called uh, like two-ended bulb, something like that. Um, it basically denotes that you are um, taking your load um, on one end and your neutral on the other end of that light. And this is per... Um, per bulb. So you might have one wire coming off of each end. You might have two. Uh, if you have two bulbs, you might have a maximum of four wires. It really just depends on your fixture that you're starting with um, and how those tombstones are set up. But essentially, this is your, your wire that's coming in from, uh, from the house or from you know the, the, the socket. Uh, you've got a green for ground. You've got L for load. Um, and then you've got N for neutral. The load is usually like a, a red or a black wire. The neutral is usually a white wire, but I'll show you how to wire these up as we go. So that's the first type you might run into, a two-sided connection. The other type that you might find is a single-ended bulb, and you'll notice the difference right away. Um, there's actually a dead end to the bulb. This end doesn't get any power. It doesn't need any wires whatsoever because you're taking the load and you're taking your neutral and they're going to the two pins uh, or the two sockets on one side of the bulb and that's it. So um, that is really important because if you wire up a fixture for LEDs, you're gonna need to wire it differently. Um, as you can see from these diagrams for a two-sided bulb, versus a single sided bulb. So when you're shopping for LED lights, make sure that you look for either single ended or two ended bulbs. And uh, depending on how you wanna wire it up or what you buy, these are the basic diagrams that you're gonna be looking at. All right, so one more thing we need to talk about real quick before we get into this project is the two types of tombstones. So the tombstones are what connects your bulbs at both ends. Uh, this is what it looks like right there. That's a tombstone. And there's two different types. There's a shunted tombstone and there's a non-shunted tombstone. And usually you'll see the wires um, coming into the sides. Either it comes into both sides or maybe it just comes into one side. And uh, so these are the two different types. There's shunted and there's non-shunted. And essentially with LED lights, the rule of thumb is to steer away from shunted tombstones because the power only comes in one side and then it goes to both terminals. 
So that might cause big problems if you have a single-ended bulb because it would essentially connect your neutral and your load together and you might short out your, um, your bulb. Again, I'm not an expert in electricity or uh, anything like that, but uh, it doesn't sound like a good idea. The, the one that you're gonna find most often is non-shunted. And essentially what that means is you've got two wire terminals on one on each side and it goes to one pin of that tombstone. So you've got your load coming in one side and your neutral coming in the other side. That's what you're gonna be looking for. That will keep you out of trouble when you are rewiring these uh, fixtures for LEDs. All right, now let's get into the actual project itself. So as I said, uh, I have some Sunco bulbs. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go check those out. Here's the installation diagram. Uh, as you can see, it says that you can use it with a ballast, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the ballast completely out, and I'm going to use scenario two here, which is bypassing the ballast, and this is a double-sided bulb, which means I need power on both ends and not just on one end. All right, this is the four-foot LED. It's 18 watts. 2,000 lumens, uh, 5,000 K daylight, lasts for 50,000 hours. Pretty good deal. These are the bulbs themselves. Uh, when you take them out of the box, they've got these little end caps on. That just protects the pins, so you can go ahead and take those off both ends. Again, you can see it's just got one strip of LEDs all the way down. You can get these with a frosted cover or a clear cover. Really doesn't matter. And uh, these are typically um, the same size as a T8 bulb. At least that's what's most common right now. For the fixture itself, I just went and picked up the cheapest, the absolute cheapest shop light I could find. This happens to be a T12 shop light, uh, Lithuania shop light. It's for T12 bulbs. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because the tombstones for T12 and T8 bulbs are exactly the same. Um, the reason I went with the, the T12 shop light is because it's super, super cheap. Basically, no one uses T12 bulbs anymore. And because we're ripping the ballast out, we don't really care what kind of electronics or what kind of hardware is inside of this because we're just going to rip it out anyways. Um, so I just went for the cheapest thing I could possibly find. That happens to be it and here's the fixture itself. We do have a power cable on the end, which we're going to leave intact, and we do need a few tools for this project. Uh, the first of which is a screwdriver, um, and then we're gonna need some wire cutters and strippers, and then um, just some wire nuts. So pretty basic, pretty simple. Again, if you're not super handy with um, electrical, I would definitely um, talk to someone who maybe is. This is a pretty easy project, but um, you know, because it does use electricity, there obviously is um, you know some some risk involved. So just do what you're comfortable with and uh, stay out of trouble. All right, so I've taken those two um, two screws off, and the first thing I'm going to do is pop this uh, light fixture open. Now obviously you want to unplug this if it's plugged into a circuit breaker or hardwired into a house. Obviously the circuit breaker needs to be off before you've done any of this. And this is what you'll find when you open one of these up. And it may look daunting. There's a whole lot of wires going on in here. Um, this is the ballast itself. Um, but this is actually, it's a lot less daunting than it looks um, once we get into it. All right, so the first thing we wanna do, now that we know that the power is off, is to cut our ballast out. So here's the ballast, we're not gonna need it. Um, and it doesn't really matter what wire goes where. At this point, all we need to do is cut all of these wires and get this ballast out. We will sort out what wires go where afterwards because like I said before, it is super simple. All right. Just a couple 
more wires here. All right, so as I said, the first step is to remove the ballast. Um, what we've done here is we've cut every single wire as close as we possibly can to this ballast. And then there's just a, a screw holding this one in. So I went ahead and popped that off. And then it should just wiggle right out. So that's the ballast. That's what allows your T12, T8 bulbs to uh, fire. These actually go bad pretty quickly. And we don't need it at all in an LED setup because it's a direct drive system. So we're going to connect these wires directly. All right. So as I said, it looks like there's a lot of wires here, um, but it's actually not that bad. All right. So let's take a quick look at all of the wires that are currently involved in this fixture. The first thing you want to do is go to the power cord, the power plug and follow that into your fixture. What you're going to find is three wires. There's a green wire, which goes to a green screw. That's the ground. We're going to leave that alone. And then the other, only other two wires coming out, one is a black and one is a white. And the black is your load. That's what's carrying your power. And the white is your neutral. That's where your power is returning to. That's what's coming out of the wall. That's why you've got a three prong fixture. The rest of these wires are all coming to and from tombstones. And we're going to drastically simplify the wiring diagram, as you saw at the beginning of the video, for this LED fixture. Essentially, because we have a two-sided bulb, we're going to take all of the wires that are attached to this end and connect them to either the black or the white. And then we're gonna take all of the wires coming from these two tombstones and connect them to whatever's left here, either the black or the white. And that's really about it. So let's get going. Uh, we're gonna strip these wires back and we're going to connect them to wire nuts. All right, and now that we have our wire nuts attached, let's take one quick look at how this is wired once again. Again, we've got the wire coming in from the wall, from the plug, we've got the green ground, we have not touched that. We've got the black for the load, we've got the white for the neutral. The black, in this case, is going to the left-hand side. So we've got all four of our wires from the tombstones, the blues and the yellows are all connected to that wire nut with the black. And then the white goes over here to this wire nut and we've got all the maroons and the reds from the other two tombstones. And those are all wire nutted to the white. Again, it doesn't matter what color all of the wires from the tombstones are. All that matters is in this two-sided bulb that we're sending the load to one side of the tombstones and the neutral to the other side of the tombstones. So once we've confirmed that all that all looks good and these wire nuts are nice and snug, let's uh, cover this fixture back up. All right, and the last step before we plug this thing in is just to install the LED bulbs. Obviously the LEDs need to be in the downward position. So all you need to do is make sure that these tombstones are popped up and locked in. And then you just drop your LED bulb in and all you have to do is rotate it until you hear it snap in place. Then it's nice and secure just like you would with any other bulb. Same exact thing with the LEDs. All right, there we go, we're done. So let's plug this sucker in. 
All right, and now for the moment of truth, just like lighting a Christmas tree, we'll plug this sucker in. And there we go. If we've wired it correctly, according to the diagram, your LED lights will turn on. And as you can see, they are super bright. So now that we know that this has worked and it's wired correctly, let's go install it in the fish room. All right guys, and here is the finished product installed in the fish room above two of my 40 gallon breeder aquariums. Now this, these two aquariums actually didn't have a light for the longest time, so I'm happy that they have a light now. And uh, this is the prototype, this is what it looks like. This is the one that was just rewired. You can see it's got two bulbs there and um, I'm hanging it from the ceiling here. And uh, it's hanging, I don't know, about a good uh, four inches above the top cover to the aquarium. You have to excuse the uh, cloudy water. I actually just uh, cleaned these tanks out. So uh, there's a little bit of uh, fine debris stirred up in the water column. But if you compare this, this is a four foot LED shop light to what's down below. This is a six foot DIY LED, and this has twice as many LEDs. It's obviously a little bit further. It's about 12 inches away from the top of the lid. Um, but you'll see quite a difference. Um, and first of all, these lights actually turned out to be a little bit more blue, and you'll see that reflected here in the aquariums. Um, obviously the light goes all the way to the end of the tank because it's a, you know, six, six foot light. And uh, the light up here, it actually is a little bit more of a daylight color. And obviously it doesn't go all the way to the ends, so there's more light towards the middle, less light towards the end. But all in all, I think it works really well. The bulbs were $8 a piece. The fixture was, uh, I don't know, $12, $13. So for under $30, you've got yourself a four foot LED shop light, aquarium light, fish room light, or whatever you want to use it for. So anyways guys, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.